Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel and as always thank you so much for coming back. Today I'm going to be talking about what it means to be a Gemini and it's actually one of the two signs, the other one being Scorpio, where part of my goal for the video is to debunk a lot of the harsh cliches about the sign. So um, some of the things that can be said that are not true about a Gemini is that they are two-faced, they're unreliable, um, and even I think one of the most extremes is that they're the most likely to be serial killers. I think people say that about Scorpios too. Um, but let me say one thing that I genuinely mean. There is no such thing as a bad sign, like truly. It just completely depends on your natal chart. Um, no one is as simple as one sign, and also every sign has amazing qualities and every sign has areas for growth, right? Um, and so let's start with one of the most controversial aspects to a Gemini. They're symbolized by the twin. And so again, this is where the cliche of them being two-faced comes from. But really what it means is that they have two very distinct um, sides to their personality. And that does not mean that they have to be contradictory or evil or bad. It literally just means that, here's a perfect example, I am um, a very outgoing person in a social setting, but it drains me entirely to be in a social setting. So it's this um, polarity between being outgoing and then being highly introverted at the same time. So. The way that it can feel to a Gemini is that my greatest strength is also my greatest weakness and the thing that I pride myself on most also has this other layer to it that I have to reflect on internally. Um, if, but if you think of this in a positive way, they are some of the most interesting and complex people that you can meet because you think you have them figured out and you think that you get it and then as you get to know them more closely, you start to peel back some of these layers and find like, oh, this person who I thought was a life of the party actually really is quite sensitive and likes to um, spend a lot of time at home and I actually really relate to them more than I thought I would. Um, they are the, so they're ruled by Mercury, and Mercury is the planet of communication. Gemini's, the way I would put it, are the communicators of astrology. So they really are here to take complex ideas and thoughts and put them into a digestible and universal human language. So um, there's a lot of famous writers and famous artists who are Gemini's. Um, shout out to Kanye West and Kendrick Lamar who are very successful and in my opinion very talented writers. Take it or leave it. I know that, that Kanye West can be quite controversial but um, these Gemini's are essentially their brains working at a million miles a minute. So while some signs are very physical, which would be like Earth signs, Taurus, and Capricorn, some signs are very emotional. That would be water signs like Scorpio and Cancer. Gemini is super mental. Um, it's an air sign, so just like Aquarius and Libra, they're kind of ruled by the head and the brain. Um, but Gemini is that in a way where it's coming completely out of their mouth or out of their hand written on paper. So they're not here to keep their thoughts internal. They're here to turn their thoughts into something that benefits the rest of the world. So again, like I talked about in past videos, what Gemini has to offer the room is an ability to take everyone's ideas or even their own ideas and turn it into a digestible and really successful form of communication. So they make really good writers, really good copywriters, um, they make really good editors, they could make um, really successful artists like we talked about, musicians. Anything that has to do with written or spoken word, you can pretty much guarantee a Gemini is going to be somewhat successful at it. So depending on their natal chart, this could be more forward-facing or less forward-facing. You know, they might be someone who is a really successful songwriter, but they have no desire to become an actual artist themselves. They like to stay behind the scenes. Or like I talked about with Kendrick and um, Kanye West, they have a desire to be forward-facing with their um, written and spoken word. Um, in regards to relationships, these are some of the most fantastic networkers. So um, again, with this ability to have, uh, with your unique ability to communicate with people, that also manifests itself in um, 
immediate relationship so they're wonderful people to have at a dinner party because they're never going to be short of something to say and they're never going to be boring they're always going to have you know literally we don't even know 50 percent of what's going on in a gemini's mind because that's how quickly it's going um and so the way i would put it is they're not going to be a boring dinner date they're not going to be a boring person that you invited to your party and they're never going to be a boring partner um the interesting thing about this though is that it's one of the least emotional signs. So Gemini is interesting in the fact that they have a ton of relationships, but they might not necessarily have a ton of people that they're giving themselves away to. So while it may feel like a Gemini is spilling their whole life story to you, they're doing that more mentally than they are emotionally. Um, and so they're an interesting cookie to crack in the sense that, is that the right phrase? Tough cookie to crack? I'm sure that's not right. I'm very sorry. But anyways, let me know what it is. Um, but they're not as open as they may appear. So if you are, if your partner is a Gemini, if your best friend's a Gemini, or if your parents are a Gemini, the way that you can best support them is giving them a safe space and encouraging them to share from a less mental level and a more emotional level because they have a ton of ability and I'm sure a bunch of outlets to describe what they're thinking, but they don't necessarily do that so easily to describe what they're feeling. And it depends on their natal chart entirely, but for the most part, that's how you can be, how you can have a kind of transformative relationship with the Gemini. Um, and then the last thing to be said about them, which I think is their one of their greatest strengths and that I really admire about them is that they are eternally curious. So they're people that even at 80 years old, they're still trying to learn a new language or studying a new subject or starting a new career. These are people who kind of never give up on the idea of being a student. They really do believe that every day is a new opportunity to learn something new. Um, so the way I would describe them is the communicator, but also the most curious of the zodiac. They really are have a childlike curiosity about everything that life has to offer. Um, so in further videos, I'm going to be talking about what it means to be a Gemini rising, which is quite different than just being a Gemini. And I'm going to be talking about what it means to have your moon in Gemini. Um, but this video specifically is about if your sign, you know, you walk into a bar and someone says, hey, what's your sign? And you'd say, I'm a Gemini. This is this video is for you. Um, so if you have any questions, you can feel free to DM me on Instagram or send me an email um, and I um, and so subscribe if you want to watch any further videos and I hope this was somewhat informative for you guys. So thank you so much. Bye.